we got uh, some news on xCloud Beta. Yeah, okay, so xCloud Beta is out now. Um, that's You kind of had to get an invite for it uh, if you were one of the Game Pass Ultimate uh, uh, kind of members. But the big thing is, is that now xCloud isn't just like this idea that Microsoft has. And it's actually working really well. I, most of what I've seen, people haven't had any issues. Now, the big thing that I want to point out to you is the same day that the news of this beta went live, PlayStation now announced that you can finally stream in 1080p. That hmm. that just seems so like problematic uh, for for the future of PlayStation streaming services because now you've got xCloud that works on even iOS. They got iOS, Safari. You can do it on PC, on Firefox. You know, Internet yeah. Explorer. <laughs> It's like Internet Explorer isn't around, but like they have they, they're really starting to push this idea. And, and I've mentioned it before is my tin foil hat theory that Xbox is, is starting to move away from the consoles because they see the shortages that are coming. And if they can make a dongle or an app mm -hmm. that is directly linked to your TV and it's an X Cloud app and you can yep. just stream, connect your controller to Bluetooth, that's huge. And then also you don't have to sell consoles when you're selling subscriptions. And if this this is just another subscription that people tie into their the bevy of subscriptions that we already have. I think that this is where uh, Xbox is really going to shine. I'm not sure how much you guys have like read into this or if you guys have gotten a chance to test out the xCloud beta. Uh, yeah, so I've used the xCloud beta yeah. since it released on Android last year. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. I, I'm not in the beta for iOS and, and Apple devices right now. But that being said, I think I think you're spot on. I think it's going to take a lot longer than a lot of people perceive this yes. this this transition from console to just dedicated streaming. I think for at very least the next ten years, this is just going to be like a supplemental addition to Xbox's catalog. I can't see this being a replacement for at least ten years until the infrastructure across the world is ready for that. Um, and then just touching on your on your point about Sony, I know that uh, they're working with Microsoft on like Azure streaming solution. So it's going to take time, but yeah. uh, they're in the way. They're working on it. Um, I agree with you, Steve. I feel like this is kind of like what VR is now. <laughs> um, it, VR is not at its point, like the pinnacle, right? It hasn't really shifted all of the majority of gamers onto wanting to game in virtual reality, right? It's something that's really cool to have. There's amazing games on VR, great experiences that you can experience on VR, um, but it's just not as popular yet. And it's not feasible because it's still fairly expensive. And I feel for xCloud, it can be very, very expensive. When you look, unfortunately, Malik out here in Canada, our internet plans aren't the greatest. <laughs> Um, they're very expensive and you're, you're, you have to pay, like you get limits on how much internet you can use. Um, yeah, so actually, yeah, yeah, so, you know, I think that's probably the main hurdle for X cloud gaming or just streaming mm -hmm. services in general. I think that's why Stadia as well has its issues, although there's many issues there that Stadia has. Um, but just the accessibility to services like this it's not for the everyday gamer. It's not for everyone. It's for a very niche audience that has the resources um, to do that. And you bring up that point of VR, and it's it's almost like it's kind of it's kind of a low cost version of gaming, but it's also not because internet, like you said, isn't always widely you know uh, available, and then the high speeds that you need um, to yeah. play your games, you know, at high frame rates, high resolution, um, and without any kind of latency, isn't there yet. Uh, Caboose, I know that you kind of had something to say, so I don't want to cut you off. Too much. No, I was just saying that, like, I agree that that you guys are making all good points, especially on the fact that. Microsoft realizes and recognizes that most especially in the climate that we're in right now in the last year, it's hard for people to get their hands on new consoles, sure. uh, whether it's the Series X, the Series S or PlayStation 5s. So if they have the ability to have people playing whatever games that are available in their library or to be able to get stuff like Game Pass on any device and play wherever they're going, 
that's their long game that is their way where they're like you know what even if they're gonna have like a million people who subscribe to it just to check it out and then forget that they're paying for it for however long (laughs) you know or people who sign up for their free trial and then just forget about it next thing you know 12 months later they've forked over how much like xbox i'm sure they factor in things like that because they know that that this is kind of the future you know, this is this is what killed things like Blockbuster when Netflix came along and became a streaming service yeah. where you could watch movies like this. It could be the same thing that does. I don't think this is necessarily kill like game consoles or anything, but it'll be something that helps Xbox compete against what is a real good library of exclusives that PlayStation has to offer. People will be getting Xboxes because it is just a more affordable option to play a wide variety of games yes xbox or playstation has spider-man yes playstation has god of war horizon this that and the other those are all incredible games that are absolutely worth your money but if you're somebody who's on a budget would you rather have an entire library of games that are multi-platform granted but an entire library of games nonetheless available to try out for however much per month or would you rather be forking over $80 for each separate title, you know? Right. Yeah. And until PlayStation introduces an option, which I don't think they will, um, people are just still going to be flocking to the service to the point where I think, again, Xbox is going to start really competing mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. PlayStation. And I think the smartest thing that they did was, I mean, granted, they were already in the gaming space, but added to their library of services. Yep. Because even use a a caboose, I don't think that they're banking on this being the the end all be all of the like the future of gaming. But if it is, they're they're in there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like Stadia, who just came out swinging, they're like, we're in the gaming space. We we're they're paving that way. Yeah, we're doing it. Everyone's like, well, we're not here yet, and they're like, well, we don't have anything else to kind of (laughs) offer you. So I guess shut down all our studios. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah, they're in a really comfortable position where they can kind of play both ends and come out on top, you know, mm-hmm. in, the, in the physical space and in the streaming space. Mm-hmm. And it's just and interesting the- too because usually this is the kind of stuff that would happen behind doors, right? Like we would mm-hmm. see them testing all this tech, um, but. Xbox has always been great at marketing themselves and using the buzz to market themselves. So the fact that they're yeah. launching it on beta, more people have access on iOS. Um, you know, I, I think that's it's awesome, right? It's just getting a sneak peek to the possibilities um, of games on, on the go could be. Mm-hmm. And it and it also brings this this point too of like in big metropolitan areas right if you've got a pretty decent phone and you've got either a good uh phone carrier or you have some stable connection to a a wi-fi you can play single player small games on the go on your phone just by connecting a controller with bluetooth you don't need to buy a 300 Mm dollars switch like obviously nintendo has their own thing and playstation has like their own exclusives but if you just want to play some general games this is a great option because it's starting to push accessibility farther and it's going to really force some big companies some big internet service providers to put that infrastructure in i mean you look at what google did when they announced google fi they just did this overhaul across the United States of, you know, upgrading fiber wire and, and making internet more accessible. Now mm-hmm. it's just, you know, time for policymakers uh, to kind of make it more and, you know, city planners to make it more accessible to the general public as well. And, and right. higher speeds and getting rid of data caps is the big thing too, because when you're streaming games, that's a, that's a huge load. Um, and it's going to take up a lot of your internet. Uh, but one thing I did want to point out too, though, is when you look at Xbox games, pass and you look at playstation now playstation now could succeed with the model that they have now if they put some of their big triple a's on playstation now because yep. playstation now's model is that you get games for a limited time like marvel avengers is on there for a level a limited time yeah that could work for them because horizon X- as well i think is free horizon, for, yeah for and the bit. complete yeah. edition yeah. with all yeah. of uh the dlc so mm-hmm. that that works for them and i want to see playstation start to carve out their own niche within the within this like streaming world they don't need to do what microsoft and xbox are doing they just need to offer something comparable that fits within their brand Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i completely agree and Mm -hmm. it's just a start because 
Sony's been pl- pretty quiet on uh, what the plans are for PlayStation and all their services. We just know something is coming and we're getting hints of what that could be. Um, but I feel like it just makes sense. I don't think it's out of the like, I know sometimes we pin the two against each other. Like, oh, you know, now Xbox is doing X Cloud, so this is their one up over PlayStation. And I know we do that. We're gamers. Sometimes we sure. we play the console <laughs> wars, although they're not really there. They're both both companies are yeah. making money. <laughs> you know, let's Absolutely. be real. Um, yeah. But I think this is it's it's just kind of natural. Like this is kind of normal news. You would expect if the a possible future for gaming is in streaming services that. Yeah, both companies explore that. Um, and I don't think it's at the point where it really will make or break a company if they're the first to be in it before the other. We saw what happened to Stadia. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So it'll be interesting how this develops in terms of like how it will have an impact on the industry as a whole. Um, but yeah, can't wait to see more for uh, streaming services. And if someone could actually make it happen, that's 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 great (laughs) but we'll just have to wait and see for that one um that's it for our episode today uh thank you guys so much for tuning in before we go i gotta know guys what are you guys up to this week oh boy some games with you guys later yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah yeah. we're gonna play some games but uh besides that i don't know i'm just no more falcon and winter soldier to look forward to every week I know. I, I, I know the Mortal Kombat movie's out now, so I don't know. Now I've just kind of gone back. I'm playing Injustice a little more. And, okay. Okay. Uh, I love that game still. Uh, give me an Injustice three, please. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So some Injustice content on Caboose's channel and uh, socials. Got to look out for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Twitter, and Instagram at Caboose EK. Thank you, Malik. Mm-hmm. I'm just Overwatch League is back in full swing. Uh, Valorant is starting to reach a peak. So that's been like consuming my life. Um, Call of Duty League was also on this weekend. So like I've got three monitors. It was just full esports this weekend. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Malik Shelp. And then also you can follow me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash live W Malik. Awesome. Steve. Sorry to get it down, Caboose. I'm trying to take after you. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's for me i've got i've got a little bit of content going up this week talking about you know new season of warzone i also got a review of returnal coming out this week as well upon the uh, the big release uh thanks to playstation so yeah i've got a lot a lot in the pipelines uh for uh, squadstate.com and you can also follow me on twitter at sfigbari uh, like Steve mentioned, you can check out all those great articles at squadstate.com. I can't wait to hear about your returnal uh, news and uh, see what you thought about that one, because I'm really looking forward to that title. Um, for myself, though, it's just the same old Call of Duty stuff. Um, I don't know what I'm going to watch anymore. So <laughs> please fill that void. Send me suggestions at This Is Camco on all these socials and let me know what's up. Um, and then as uh, Malik mentioned, we will be... Uh, Caboose, Malik and I we're going to be playing um, some Fall Guys I think that'll be up later on uh, the leaderboard so you could stay tuned for that and yeah that's pretty much it for us right here Mm -hmm. Um, saw someone just drop in chat you're a little late bud but hey hey to you (laughs) Um, but yeah hit us up on our socials at squad state let us know what you want us to talk about next week on the podcast as well as just check us out because we have some really cool stuff going on and we're we're kind of awesome we're, we're just a little awesome a little bad. just a little, a little awesome <laughs> uh, but that's it for now from us we will see you guys next week thank you guys for watching 